The USAID PEPAM project is designed to assist the government of Senegal to move toward the MDGs by 2015 by increasing access to potable water and sanitation. The project focuses on the training of local businesses and the introduction of low-cost appropriate technologies in water and sanitation for remote villages. As part of this project, Enterprise Works, a division of Relief International, is promoting low-cost manual drilling. All of the tools and equipment needed for manual drilling are available locally. The drilling stems, bits, and other tools are made in local welding shops a mud pump for circulating the drilling fluid and a submersible pump for developing the well are both available in Senegal. A supply chain for importing drilling polymer has been developed through the local merchant in the Casamance. The site is selected in collaboration with the villagers. Once the site has been selected, the mud pits are dug and plastered with a thin coat of cement mortar to prevent the loss of drilling fluid in the sandy soils of the Casamance. Different bits are available to make the work easier in different formations. The mud pits provide a reservoir for the drilling mud and a settling basin for the cuttings. To avoid unnecessary delays while drilling, it is important that all of the tools are in good working order. Once the tools have been prepared, well drilling can begin. The method shown here is called rotary jetting. This technique is similar to conventional mechanized rotary drilling. The drilling mud, consisting of water and a biodegradable polymer, is pumped from the mud pit down the hollow drill stem and circulated upward in the borehole. The difference is that the rotational movement is provided by manpower rather than by a machine. The advantage of this technique over other manual methods is that there is no need to remove the tools from the hole until the borehole has been completed. The turning of the bit cuts the soil and the circulating water brings the cuttings to the surface where they settle in the mud pit. As the well depth increases, additional drilling stems are added and the drilling continues until the design depth is reached. The project has trained and provided equipment on credit to eight private well drilling businesses in the main towns of the Casamance. These businesses have drilled 80 productive boreholes in less than a year for the USAID Pepdom Project, UNICEF, CICR, and other organizations in the Casamance, and they have all repaid their equipment loans. The cuttings are continuously removed from the settling basin. These hand-drilled wells can be installed for less than $3,000, while a conventional machine-drilled well 30 meters deep in the Casamance costs $12,000. The final well is the same, whether it is drilled by hand or by a machine, as long as the same standards for the well casing and gravel pack are used. Once the design depth is reached, circulation continues to flush the suspended cuttings out of the borehole. During drilling, soil samples are taken every meter or whenever the well driller notes a change in the drilling conditions. This helps the well drillers to place the well screen and sanitary seals in the correct locations. While the drilling is progressing, other team members prepare the well screen, form the connections, and make the sump. Well casing can be made from PVC pressure pipe, and the screen can be cut using a hacksaw. However, in areas where factory-made well screens and threaded well casing are readily available, these are preferable to locally made well casing. The joints between the sections of casing must be strong. The well drillers form a bell joint by heating the PVC pipe. The pipes are glued together as the casing is installed. Before the casing is installed in the borehole, the sump is made from a section of unslotted PVC pipe, providing a place for any sand that may pass through the well screen and gravel pack to settle. The lower end of the sump is heated and closed completely, sealing the casing. A polypropylene rope is embedded in the closure to assist in the lowering of the casing. The rope remains in the well and can be used to assist in the removal of the casing at a later date. Once the borehole has been drilled to the design depth, the drill stem is removed one section at a time until all of the stem and the drill bit are recovered. Care must be taken to ensure that the drill stem is not dropped into the borehole. The first section of the well casing is lowered into the borehole and is supported using the polypropylene rope, 
while the next section is glued into place. This process is repeated until all of the casing has been installed. Once the casing has been installed, the borehole needs to be flushed to clean out the excess drilling mud and to make sure that the slots in the well screen are clean. Clean water is pumped into the well casing under pressure so that the water flows down and out through the slots and up between the casing and the borehole. When all the traces of drilling mud have been removed, the gravel pack can be placed. The gravel pack consists of graded gravel ranging from 1 to 3 millimeters in diameter. The gravel is brought to the site in sacks and is poured slowly into the space between the casing and the borehole. Care is taken to ensure that the casing remains centered in the borehole. The gravel pack is installed to a depth 2 to 3 meters above the slotted portion of the casing to prevent fine sand from flowing into the well. After completion of the drilling and the installation of the gravel pack, the well is developed to improve the flow of water into the well and to remove fine particles in the aquifer around the well. In this case, an electric submersible pump is being used. Well development is very important and is achieved by pumping water from the well at higher rates than will be expected during normal pump operation. By alternating pumping and back flushing, the porosity of the aquifer surrounding the well can be improved and the fine particles removed. During the process, the water becomes turbid as the fine particles are drawn through the gravel pack and pumped out of the well. The process continues until the water is clear. At this point, a sample is taken for water quality analysis. Clay soil is placed to a depth of 2 meters above the gravel pack and in the upper 3 meters of the borehole to ensure that surface water cannot flow into the well along the casing. A concrete pad is cast around the well, providing a clean area for the operators and a place to anchor the pump. Hand-drilled wells, like other boreholes, can be used with a variety of pumps, including the locally made Arabon rope pumps, India Mark II pumps, and submersible pumps. The choice of pump depends on the number of users and the water table depth, but regardless of the type of pump used, the headworks must be completed and the pump installed. The Village Water Users Committee is responsible for the management of the pump. They participate in the pump installation so that they can learn how to repair and maintain their pump. Rope pumps have proven to be good for small villages and households because repair costs are very low and the technology is easily mastered by the users themselves. For larger villages with more users, the India Mark II pump is a better choice for installation on the hand-drilled well.